Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Good morning, is it still? It's barely still morning. Uh, but today I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a different video. I have like had it on my video idea list for quite some time to do like a day in my life sort of video. I do do these studio vlogs fairly regularly, but you know, I thought it might be interesting to just try and film for an entire day to see what I actually get up to on said day if I had reasonable amounts of interesting things going on then, which today's plan is, yeah, Yes, hopefully there will be interesting stuff going on today. Although the other reason that I've sort of been putting this idea off is my days vary like crazy depending on what projects that I'm working on. Today is a lot of like pre-planned sort of store stuff so I do have a pretty packed day for that. It's a very like singular task day but a lot of the times I will be flipping between like five different things, you know, editing one video, filming another, maybe filming a prop shop video, video or working on something there. So this isn't like necessarily a great representation of what my average day looks like because I really don't have an average day. Which I personally like, you know, it works for me to just sort of go with the flow for whatever I am working on. But for today there is a fairly set out a schedule of tasks that I want to accomplish. So I figured this would be a good test to try this sort of a style of video out. So like I said, the plan for today is to essentially make like a massive restock of products. I'm getting extremely low on the different palette products, specifically the customized ones with the pre-painted lids that you guys really still love, which still blows my mind. And just thank you always for being so into the concept of my art supplies products, but I'm getting extremely low. So it's about time for a restock. So I'm looking at at restocking pretty much every type of a palette product that I make, including the new metallic towers. I've printed a few lids already to paint. I'm just gonna do like a small wave of like five, I think, uh, to start it out. I know that is more of like a specialized product somewhat like the Kuratake towers are, which I know everyone doesn't have those paints, but in the video where I showed those off, there was a decent amount of interest, so I figured it wouldn't hurt to pre-paint a few to just have them up in my store for anyone that's actually interested in them. So yeah, hopefully today is going to be pretty fun. It's always fun for me to pour paint. It's something different from what I normally do and it's just more convenient for me to do like big batches of products at a time. So that's the plan for today. Although the first thing that I'm going to do, I have an order to package up and get shipped out since it's Tuesday. If anyone is interested, I know this isn't really listed anywhere in my store, but I figured it can't hurt to mention it. Normally right now the schedule for shipping out products is on Tuesdays and Thursdays days. So if you order anything on like a Thursday to like Monday, it will go out on Tuesday and then any sort of things that I might not have been able to fulfill due to whatever the order might have been, they try and go out on Thursday. So that's the shipping schedule if anyone was interested in that. Um, so today is Tuesday, so I'm going to package up the one order that I have to go out today. back from the post office now, I've turned into a stereotypical Canadian with my Timmy's. Although I'm not actually a very coffee crazy person, this is literally the closest thing to coffee that I will touch. Now that I'm back, the next thing is probably going to be to tape up all of the palette lids, which I might convince my mom to help me with because taping everything up so that the paint and resin and stuff doesn't get on the inside of the palettes of whatever kind they are actually takes an obnoxious amount of time. I probably could have spent almost the entire 
entire day just taping the palettes considering how many I have to tape up. I did actually do some yesterday because I wanted to spray paint some of the lids the different colors. Uh, I tend to grab some of the travel palettes and spray them white and I grab some of the palette towers and spray them black. I just do that so that the base color possibly suits the colors that I pour on it better so if there's any like areas of the plain lid peeking through it just looks a lot nicer. Yeah I guess let's take a look at all of these lids. I know it doesn't look like that much but there are quite a few here and this isn't actually all of them so there's some of these downstairs that I have pre-painted black and then these ones are the Fine Tech Tower ones which are the new product so I think I'm gonna grab four out of these six. I just print them in doubles uh, but having an extra lid as for like a pre-printed one for like a DIY kit or something is going to be good just for you know keeping stock up to date. But the other thing that I actually almost moved off of this table and then I realized that I should probably talk about this but this is as it kind of obviously states on the side of the box here is the B grade box. So thank you to everyone who left a comment on my last video with your input about the concept of like a clearance or B grade section. So these are the products that I found around the studio and I just did inventory on all of them and yeah so there's a decent collection of things. If anyone's interested all of these are like very minor cosmetic imperfections. In fact half of these technically have no cosmetic imperfection they're just made out of the old plastic so for instance these brush tower layers on top here uh, they're actually technically my prototypes. I was messing with the scalloped uh, shape I guess you could say and the point so these are actually perfectly fine they're just technically prototypes and I don't need that many extra brush layers so they are actually also out of the other plastic as well but just things like that so if you're interested in any of the clearance B grade items these should all be up in my store now for you know whatever kinds of products there are there there is a decent amount of inserts if you're interested in those there's some normal tower layers a few Kuretake layers down here some of the K pans some mixing trays so a reasonable variety of different products and that will obviously be something that I keep up to date with any new possible like minor imperfection things that happen in the future but yeah on to taping up all of these lids So here are all of the taped up lids. We have the black travel palettes, white travel palettes, black palette towers, white palette towers, and then these are the metallic fine tech uh, lids. So quite a decent collection here. Generally, if I have a lot of leftover paint, I will grab even more travel palettes, but this is where we're starting for today. The next thing on the agenda is this. This is my custom, sit down here so you can actually see this better. This is my custom like a drawing rack tower thing that I built a few months ago and it's seriously been one of the best decisions to build this. It is so easy and convenient and I can do far more products than I ever could because of being able to just store them all in this. It's also way better because it obviously has the doors and stuff so nothing gets stuck to the resin of the palette or any of that so this is amazing but as you can see there are all of the messed up trays in it still that I never cleaned up from the last time so I'm gonna go through show you exactly what this entails if we open this here so a lot of these cookie trays still have the uh, paint splatters on them from the last wave so some of the more interesting 
pieces I try and recycle and that is actually what this is here. This is the side of an Alex drawer and all of these pieces are just leftover remnants of pour painting like little bits because the pouring medium basically makes them like window decals and they stick to this thing no problem. So yeah if you've ever wondered what this is in the background of a video that's what all of those are. I kind of wish this was almost like a bigger wall or just something that I film on more because I think this would look quite cool as a background in a video. But anyway I'm just going to go through all of this, clean it up, grab the cups to reuse as many as I can and yeah just get everything ready to paint. So I got all the trays cleaned up and the cups graded. Basically I go through all of the ones that I can salvage and split them into ones that are clean enough that I can mix paint up in, ones that are a bit more dirty that I'm just going to use for actually pouring the colors into for then pouring onto the palettes. And then the third pile are like the dirtiest ones that I've probably been reusing for quite a few months at this point. And so those just end up being turned upside down to actually sit the palettes on top of to let the excess paint or resin or whatever drip off of them. I do actually get a really decent amount of uses out of each cup which is awesome because that means I'm not wasting a ton of plastic so I've really gotten this whole pour painting product thing down to a pretty minimal waste capacity. But the next thing I'm going to do is actually fill up a couple of my pouring medium bottles. I buy pouring medium in this giant uh, gallon container now since I'm going through it so much all of the time but I split it out into these larger bottles that I've saved because that's how I used to buy pouring medium so fill those up because right now I only have one that's about half full so just making sure that I have enough pouring medium in the bottles because that's what I use it out of for when I actually go to mix the paints. So <laughs> slight change of plan. You know, occasionally my body just decides to uh, give up on me and unfortunately today was one of those days. I feel like this is coming up more and more frequently in videos but I still feel the need to like preface everything that I'm about to say by first explaining that I am in fact type 1 diabetic and have been for 15 years? <laughs> Some atrocious amount of time at this point in my life. But yeah, part of that, you know, sometimes my body just decides to try and remove itself from this mortal coil for no reason. No, but basically my blood sugar decided to tank, which always just kind of knocks me out and just destroys any plans that I sort of had. Which I mean like, chill out internet doctors, I've got this under control. But yeah, today was just one of those times, which is unfortunate because obviously I had grand plans for tonight, which technically I could still partake in, but I really just don't think I should push it, you know? Health comes first, but the point is because of that, I do think I'm going to give myself the night off, you know, go to bed early, regroup tomorrow, just let my body recover from this. Uh, so this is, I guess, kind of failing at being a uh, single day in the life sort of video because I do want to include the poor painting aspect in this video because that obviously was the plan for today. But I guess this might actually be like a better look into a typical day for me because, you know, unfortunately sometimes stuff like this happens, you know, my blood sugar tanks, I have some sort of nerve pain that just is incredibly uncomfortable, blah blah blah. There's lots of fun things that happen to my body <laughs> that does become a part of my work and what I can achieve certain days. But yeah, that's a fun little update from me. I don't think I've actually mentioned this, but I do actually prefer to do the pour painting for palettes at night. Other than the fact that I'm just generally a night owl, it's actually just really way more convenient for me to look at the period of time after I've had my bedtime needle. This is just turning into a medical story time, isn't it? But after that nine o'clock mark, it's when I have a really nice solid chunk of uninterrupted time. You know, it's nice and quiet. I'm not being disturbed by any any sort of business stuff or just any other things that are going on around and I really can work to whenever I need to because generally when I'm doing the pour painting sometimes I will like mix up the paint before I have my nighttime needle and then after that's all like sorted I know that I'm like good for the night presumably I will then come back up and actually do the painting. That actually takes me for the amount of pour painting that I do in a wave now it can take me like an hour an hour and a half just to mix the paints up so that's also a reason why I'm deciding to put this off for tomorrow because in general pour painting isn't like a super intensive task you know a lot of the times after my 
my blood sugar has tanked, I'm shaking like a leaf. So like doing any amount of intensive drawing or very uh, intricate skill, like motor skill like that isn't, uh, that's not happening too well. But pour painting would generally not be a part of that. Literally if I started the pouring at like 9 30 at 10 o'clock I'm probably painting until like 1 30 at least so that is a pretty long night especially since you know I've already been knocked back on my butt once today so yeah the pour painting is just going to have to happen tomorrow I'm just going to like take it easy recover go to sleep early and yeah I guess I will see you tomorrow good morning I'm feeling a lot better today I've already got my apron on so I guess let's get this painting show on the road here are a bunch of the colors that I have grabbed to mix up for this round of lids. I also actually have these two new sets of paints that I'm probably going to break into. This one is fluorescent colors that I think will look really cool and like fun and summery since, you know, this is, I guess you could call a summer wave of palettes. And then this one is all metallics, which I really want to keep the fine tech lids to be 100% metallic paint on them. I think it's going to look really awesome. So I'm probably going to grab quite a few colors out of each of these sets as well to mix up.
so here is the aftermath of everything. I actually filled up this completely. It's not quite as tightly packed as it sometimes is product-wise. You can't really see in there, of course, because it's really dark. Uh, but yeah, it's completely filled up with the products, but it isn't quite like smushed together as maybe it normally would. But I also just in general still have this extra tray of products out here because I actually grabbed, I think, 10 more uh, travel palettes just to use up more paint, which is, you know, my typical plan. Uh, maybe not 10 normally, but hey, they can be sectioned off between mystery boxes and just general other ones. I normally give everything at least 24 hours to dry before I resin anything, but because it's such a large wave of palettes, I might actually split the resin over a couple of days just so I don't have like an atrocious amount of wet resin products around my studio and just the chaos that might ensue with that. But by the time this video goes up, everything should have been done, so I will insert a clip here of how everything turned out, and that should also mean that everything is available in my store right now. So if you saw anything that you liked, the link to my store will be in the description box. But yeah, that's gonna be where I end this studio vlog, so thank you for joining me for the last day and a half of my life, and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.